This guy feels the same way as I feel about Errol Spence Jr. As you can see in the video title here, Spence parties too much to beat Crawford. Those are the words of Nate Jones. Now, for those of you who don't know Nate Jones, he's now a boxing trainer. But back in he's, he's now a boxing trainer, but back in the days he was I guess you could say a fringe contender, the heavyweight in the 1990s and early 2000s. He fought people like Namon Brewster. In fact, he fought Brewster as an amateur as well as as a pro. He lost to Brewster as a pro. And he was a pretty good amateur. I think he medaled at, which Olympics was it? Nate Jones medaled at the 96? I think it was 96 Olympics. Yeah, because it was, yeah, there was 88, 92, 96. Yeah, so he medaled at the 96 Olympics. It was the same Olympics that Mayweather won a medal at and I think it, I believe it was a bronze medal that Nate Jones got so he was a good amateur not so successful as a pro but decent I don't think he lost that many fights he just never really achieved particularly high heights as a professional but he was a short guy Nate Jones only at like 5'11 6 foot tall something like that a short guy but he was a short guy who didn't fight like a short guy and interestingly he's from Chicago just like Montel Griffin and Montel Griffin was a short light heavyweight he was only five foot seven as a light heavyweight but he didn't fight like a short guy and what I mean by that is if you're a five foot seven light heavyweight people expect you to come bulldozing in like Joe Frazier or Mike Tyson trying to get close to the taller opponents right that's what people expect but Montel Griffin didn't fight like that Montel Griffin fought like a tall guy he would use the box you at long range even though he's short <laughs> With very good footwork and very good timing and head movement, Montel Griffin was able to have success boxing much taller guys at long range. So look up Montel Griffin if you don't know about him. He fought Roy Jones twice, fought James Tony, so on and so forth. And as I say, Nate Jones, similar situation from Chicago as well. He was a boxer rather than a pressure fighter or a slugger, even though he was short. Anyway, all of this is trivia. The point I'm making is he believes that Crawford drinks too much and parties too much to be able to, sorry, not Crawford, that uh, Spence drinks and parties too much to be able to beat Crawford. This is something that I'm not going to outright say is a fact that, you know, he parties and drinks too much to beat Crawford. But what I will say is I was disturbed and disappointed to see Errol Spence drinking and clearly inebriated with Adrian Broner and Tank Davis, etc. To me, it looks as though Errol Spence has fallen into the wrong crowd. He's started making a bit of money now. He's starting to get getting a bit of profile. He has befriended a bunch of the other PBC fighters, even though Javante Davis is not a PBC fighter. But he's fallen into a certain boxing crowd where they're all you know, going to clubs and drinking and partying and all this kind of stuff. Errol Spence wasn't like this before. Errol Spence was a Marvin Hagler type mentality. Where he was always on his job. Where there was no partying. He was always in the gym. You never saw him blow up in weight the way that he blew up in weight recently. You never saw this from Errol Spence before. But now this is going on, I'm starting to lose faith in him. I'm starting to lose confidence in him. And it's the same thing that Nate Jones is doing. He's starting to lose faith and confidence in the guy. You can't be living that kind of lifestyle at the very, very top levels. Yes, there are some fighters that people will bring out who have lived those kind of lifestyles and still been successful. But they took a hell of a lot of losses too. People bring up Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran had a lot of losses on his record, people. <laughs> How many of those losses wouldn't have been there if he would have been more disciplined? That's a question you have to ask yourselves. And on top of that, Roberto Duran was a fantastically talented fighter. He was arguably the greatest lightweight of all time. And certainly an all-time great, you know, way, way up there in the rankings of all-time great fighters, Roberto Duran. Errol Spence Jr. is nowhere near that level yet. And he may never get near that level. But what I'm saying is, if he's going to get anywhere close to the level, remotely close to the level of a Roberto Duran in terms of greatness or even a Marvin Hagler he needs to get his act together stop all this partying and drinking stop all that because it's your discipline and it's your spot and lifestyle that gives you the edge over your competition because when you're dealing with elite level boxing you're talking about tiny margins of error 
You understand? You're talking about a tiny margin of error. You're talking about a split second difference between winning and losing. And that's when abstaining from alcohol can make a big difference. Because it's the little differences that can make a big difference. Because you're dealing with fractions of a second that can make a difference between winning and losing. That's what you're dealing with. And it's not just fractions of a second for a punch that could hit you on the chin and knock you out. No, all the way through a fight. If you're a fraction of a second off and your opponent is on his job and he's sharp and he ain't been drinking, that can make the difference even between winning or losing on the scorecards. Gotta be on your job, man. And this is what I'm concerned about when it comes to Errol Spence Jr. People say, oh, come on, that man, he's just a young guy enjoying himself. I'm not saying there's anything morally wrong with what he's doing. I'm saying that from a professional standpoint, it's going to hurt him in the long run if he carries on like this. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to stop a young guy having fun. Have fun, but understand there are consequences when you're a professional athlete for having fun. The way Terence Crawford is doing it is the way Errol Spence should be doing it. I hope I ain't been mixing up the names all the way through the video. (laughs) But the way Crawford's been doing it is the way Spence should be doing it. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about everything I talked about in this video. It's Simon, I'm out.